right? And they said to me, Steve, go out there and entertain them. And so I thought, tonight I've got two acts. It was either come out here and do the magic or the male stripping. <laughs> or anything. I don't really. And uh, I thought, I'll get some practice. So I went to bought myself this book to write my book. I can see you're impressed. Well, I got it back and I thought, I'll have a look through this. You know, I like colouring pictures in me. And I got it back and I looked through it and there was nothing in it. I thought, hang on a minute, someone's trying to rip me off. Show you on this side, look. Nothing in it. And over here. Me being careful with money, I thought, yep. I'm not letting someone get one over on me, I'm taking it back, get me money back. So I went back to the shop and the guy in the shop says, Steve, you've got to think about it, it's a clever book. It says if you think about it, you can make the pictures appear. Well, you do, don't you? I did. I did. So I thought, right. So right, I've got no felt tips and crayons. Come on, money back. He said to me, you know, if you think really hard, you can cover them in. He <laughs> liked toys. Do you remember? When you were kids. <laughs> Do you remember when you were kids? Yes. Well, do you remember when you were kids and your mum and dad had used to tell you bedtime stories? No. Well, when I was a kid, we were that poor. We couldn't afford a storybook. Ah. We were poorer than that. Ah. We were that poor that my mum had to tell us bedtime stories using bits of rope. So, let me tell you a story using bits of rope. It's a story about a baby bit of rope, a mummy bit of rope, and a daddy bit of rope. Ah. All these ropes, they all went to bed. And when they were in bed, they all curled up. Baby rope curled up. Mummy rope curled up. And daddy rope curled up. You're daffer than I am, aren't you? <laughs> well, while these ropes were curled up, they all fell asleep. And they all had a dream. And funnily enough, 
It was all the same dream, but they were all the same length. So you've got one rope that's one length, you've got two ropes that's one length, and three ropes that's one length. But really, these ropes are all curled up. And when they woke up in the morning, they found out that baby rope was baby rope, mummy rope was mummy rope, and daddy rope was daddy rope. I went and bought this tin the other day, right? I thought, I like that, it's got spots on it. Goes with things I've got. <laughs> Don't get rude. Like acne, measles, all sorts of things like that. You've got an empty tin. And two ankies. A white anky and a black anky. You put your white anky in. And you put your black anky in. Get ready for this bit, girls. This is where I'm going sexily. I can see you're ready. Right? We give it a shake. <laughs> Just control yourselves. Alright, so here we go. We give it a shake. And your white anky is now black, and your black anky is now white. How about that? <laughs> You've worked it out, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what you do. You put your white anky in and you put your black anky in. And we'll give it a rub. Are you ready? And as we rub it, the spots disappear. Did you see that? <laughs> <laughs> and the spots have disappeared. They've got to go somewhere. Say yes, Stephen. Yes. <laughs> That's three of you. <laughs> the spots have got to go somewhere, say yes, Stephen. Yes. That's better. And guess where they've gone? Okay. They've got white spots on your black anky and black spots on your white anky. Do something religious at the end of this. <laughs> Coming round for a collection. <laughs> now what we've got, ladies and gentlemen, is an empty bag. And in this empty bag we place another anky. You're thinking, why he's got a lot of them? It's because I've got a cold. <laughs> there it is. We place this anky in there. And this is a bit like that. I'll grab it to what you do. This is when I ask somebody for a magic word. Does anybody know any magic words? <laughs> Every week, it's abracadabra. It is. I'll tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, after three, you're all going to say abracadabra. Okay, so are you ready? Yeah? yeah. Ready? One, two, three. Tomorrow's lunch. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is the part of the show where I need audience participation. I'm looking for a woman. We'll take this lady instead because you're close at hand. That's alright. Stand up here. What's your name and whereabouts are you from? Uh, 
Kevin Chan and Kevin from Norwich. Helen from Norwich, ladies and gentlemen. Give her a round of applause. Right. Um, Ellen, have you ever been a magician's assistant? No. This is the first time that you've been a magician's assistant. It'll be your last as well. Right. Ellen, I'll tell you what, I've got a chair here for you because I hate to see you stood up. So Ellen, just have a seat there. Uh, Ellen, some magicians cut people in half. <laughs> Me, I don't do that. Some magicians, Ellen, yeah. cut people's heads off. <laughs> You'll be pleased to know I don't do that either. But tonight, Ellen, what I am going to do is get a sword and place it through your neck. <laughs> Don't worry, Alan, I've read the instructions. <laughs> now, so, what I shall do, let's move this over in. And, uh, oh, let me just, just get this, I've got a cloth here, I've got, I don't want to sort of get blood on your dress, so I'll just put, <laughs> just hold that. <laughs> There's nothing like being prepared. Right. <laughs> and just to show you, Helen. Place the sword on. Put this around my neck. Right, tell you what, Ellen. As to this box, keep it here in case I need to get to it quick. Right. Pass me this hand, Ellen. Right, and hold on to that handle there. Right, so I'll just hold your glasses for you. I should have a sight see through those. Right. And this hand here, Ellen, put it on that until then. That serves two purposes, ladies and gentlemen. It keeps that nice and steady and keeps the fingers away from the blade. I hate to see it get hurt. So now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, placing a sword through Ellen's neck. I'm having drum roll, please, Danny. I've got all the instructions anyway. I'm trying to stand up and read. I don't want to worry, Ellen, but I've never done this before. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, placing the sword through Helen's neck. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, give a round of applause. This is Helen from Norway. The bit that all the women in this room are looking forward to. You have this, don't Give you a kiss here. Ladies and gentlemen, give her a round of applause again. That's how it's going on. All the rest of you, just form an orderly queue at the back and you can have one later. <laughs> tell you, it's an odd lot of being a sex symbol here. <laughs> you just control yourselves. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, anybody do any travelling? Yeah. Yeah? Well, we have been about a bit. 
I am. And uh, on a, a, a visit to the Far East. Have you been to the Far East? Oh, on the Far East, it's in the Far East, I saw this. You have three solid rings. And, uh, and it got quiet. <laughs> Don't get too excited. The Far East is a Chinese chip shop top side of Woolworths. That is. So this is the Chinese looking ring. So Jim, could I have a little bit of Oriental music, please?
Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the magical world, Mr. Stephen Crowley.